Today we're speaking about minerals. Uh, Albion is a leading company in the production of chelated minerals. And we'd like to speak just about some of the different minerals, Max, and what their uses are and so on. The first being uh, one that's uh, causing a lot of interest today, uh, vanadium. Right. Well, you know, the, the thing about vanadium is people didn't really know much about it at all for a long, long time. Uh, and then they started doing some research in the area of diabetes and blood sugar disorders. And what they found was, lo and behold, vanadium had a very positive impact on blood sugar, uh, much in a way maybe a chromium would, but even to a stronger degree. Mm -hmm. So vanadium is uh, very good in terms of helping you utilize your glucose. Uh, one of the things that we've noticed is that the interest in vanadium, of course, comes from everybody and from people who suffer from, say, type 2 diabetes, things such as that. Uh, but athletes in particular have been really after vanadium products and uh, it's because the athletes feel that uh, in the course of an athletic event that they need vanadium to help stimulate their ability to use their uh, energy better and the vanadium they believe helps them do that, unlocks it if you will uh, as an energy source and you know gets it more involved in metabolic actions that help them build muscle and perform better. Mm -hmm. Are we able to get vanadium from foods we eat? Typically, it... it's uh, not very available at all. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you get a small, small amount, and you don't need a lot of vanadium. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you need really 20 to 30 micrograms a mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. uh, but even at that level, uh, vanadium is not found in that many foods. And the other thing about vanadium, much like chromium, is that it doesn't get really well absorbed, mm -hmm. and especially if you get... Uh, your vanadium in an inorganic form, like it would be present in most of your vegetables and things mm -hmm. such as that, mm -hmm. your, really, your relative absorption of it would be very, very low. In like a chelated form uh, that we produce, uh, it's a combi It's well, this being a chelate, we have in the vanadium chelate, we would have the vanadium in the center and we'd have niacin and glycine forming the chelate. What we find is that uh, from work done by uh, a USDA scientist years ago, Dr. Mertz, is that chromium and vanadium, but in particular it's modeled after chromium, the true GTF chromium is a chromium organically bound in a coordinate covalent fashion to uh, glycine and niacin and uh, the rest of the glutathione molecule mm -hmm. to form the GTF chromium. Mm -hmm. Speaking of vanadium, you have mentioned that uh, an optimal amount that we need, we don't need very much, maybe 20 to 30 micrograms. Is, uh, is there a level at which it would be dangerous or is there a safety consideration with vanadium? Well, I, I have seen in, in research studies that uh, people have taken much, much higher doses without any negative impact. Uh, and so short term, probably not. Nobody has really taken a very large dose of vanadium for an extensive period of time. So we don't know what would happen if somebody did that. Uh, could be since vanadium can have almost a pharmacological effect that you might decrease your blood sugar too much. Mm -hmm. So uh, certainly I would say if you're taking anywhere from 20 to 200 micrograms of vanadium, you're not really going to be doing anything too, too harmful at all. But uh, you start getting up there like some of them that I see taking a milligram, a thousand micrograms a day. You know, that's not a wise thing to do. Okay. Thank you, Max. Sure.